Okay, okay, okay. I'll admit it. I may or may not have lied last episode when I said that we were gonna not do build base, and then we did pretty much only build base. <laughs> it wasn't my intention to spend all of last episode build base. So this time round, we're not going to be doing build base. This time we're going to be build colonists, build armor, build all those good things that make a series fantastic and make powerful characters the best. Jezebel and Smelly are our main characters at the moment and you know what? They need better armor, they need specialization and they need some material loving in terms of getting better armor and weapons. So that is the goal for today's episode. So if you enjoy any of what you see here today, consider liking and subscribing and make sure you tell your mum about it. And you know what? I'm gonna lie again, straight away and go straight back to it. We are going to do some build base today, a small amount. I'd like to get the storeroom up and running as well and just kind of be able to have the main buildings of a base functioning today as well as start working on a workshop. The workshop at the moment consists of two things. The chemistry bench, which does nice funny hats, and we have the workbench as well, which allows me to make very exciting things such as smoke leaf joints and shivs. So we kind of need to work on the research front for that. And in terms of the research, in order for us to get these progressions, what I've done is instead of remove semi-random research, I've just added the, the re-roll function just so we can then continue having the randomness of it. So the re-roll will be stone stacking, simple decorations or plumbing. Uh, let's go for fantastic stone stacking. And so with the quest that we got given last episode from the, the Empire for Warden for Hire, we have the option here to be given three prisoners, okay? We have three prisoners, but we'll end up becoming em enemies of the Empire if we then take them, right? And they'll all have Paralysis Capacious. They won't actually be useful to us. We'll accept it for the goodwill, actually. We'll accept it for the goodwill. And the prisoners have arrived. So... If these prisoners are any good, we I will steal them, you know? So if McMahon, Rena, and Rust. Start with Rust. Rust, you are double passion in archery, critical passion in healing, 10 in intellectual, you're a veterinarian, and you're inquisitive. Okay, okay, I, I, you know what? You're pretty good. Rena is a, div a diverger. You're a diligent student dwarf with great construction undergrounder, alcohol dependency, which is not ideal because I can't actually make alcohol at the moment. You are lush, muscular, mad surgeon, surgeon. You're an engineer, psychically deft, underground, diligent student. Jesus Christ. But you're unwavering loyal, so you will never join us. And McMahon is a diverger. Again, super immune, ocean smith, lover, incompetent, talent smith, construction, mining, and crafting. You know what? I don't want any of these people. They're not that good. We're just going to capture them and just keep them alive. I'm not sure if I can use them as blood bags or not, but... A new quest has become available. Young travellers need charity. A group of poor children are approaching looking for help. The children are begging for 370 silver. They want the silver so they can buy their friend back who was recently kidnapped. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Oh, I can't wait to kidnap all of you. <laughs> are any of them any good? So, <laughs> very interestingly, there is one child I'm quite interested in. <laughs> There's no way you're a child. Turn around. Let me look at you. This, uh, this here, <laughs> Altheos, is a nine-year-old preteen beggar. This is a nine-year-old child. <laughs> this nine-year-old child is very good. He has 14 double passion in crafting and a 10 double passion in intellectual. Huge. Absolutely huge. Two things that we could really do with someone that is specialised in. He's an insomniac, so wants particularly sleep, wimp, delicate, no talent. Not initially the best traits, but the double passionate 14 and the 10 double passionate intellectual at nine years old is insane. Uh, the other children aren't necessarily the best. One of them is a Neanderthal, which is quite nice potentially. And the other ones are just straight up baseliners with not really anything good going about them. So honestly, we're, we're going to arrest this child. Hops is here. Hops needs to prove herself of becoming a vampire. Just, just arrest the children. Yeah, travelers betrayed. Oh no, what a shame. It also turned out that that child that we've just kidnapped had a scorpion turret in their back pocket. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And Smelly can now gain an expertise as well. She's Smelly has managed to get to 15 in construction. We can't give her a specialization in melee, unfortunately, because she doesn't have a passion in it. Um, so I guess we either go for mining or construction. Maybe 
we give him construction as well. Really get them working. I think if we go for building speed for Smelly, we haven't really got any other builders other than Smelly than Solis. And honestly, if they're going to be the ones that are going to be doing everything for Jezebel, I'm quite happy with them being specialized in that. And you know, Solis has managed to convert Afi Elfios as well. It's going to feel a bit weird using child slavery, you know. I've, it's teetering on a side of, do I or don't I, you know? What would a vampire do? Would they? But then I look at his face and I realize this is no child. This is a lie. He's not nine years old with these skills. This is a grown man dressed up as a child. I've now started planning out the main sort of eating area, pub, whatever you want to call it. So what the general idea would be, this would be the main area here. We'll have the kitchen off to the side. And then I remembered, I used my big brain. And I remember that we are running the hotels mod, as I've said many times before. So I thought that this side here could just be a kind of like tavern area. Tavern, that's the word I'm looking for. Rooms here on the side. So you come up through the main entrance and literally you are here at your destination. There's a nice little front courtyard here to park your horse. <laughs> um, it stands out a little bit further. I might actually get it to go even further out because Eventually, we could build like a nice little sauna in here, and I think that'd be really nice. And enslaved. Solus has, has enslaved Alphios and is now one of us. I, I think I will still try to train up Alphios as a child and, you know, teach him the ways of how to do things. But I, you know, maybe he'll do some work on the side as well. I'll put him on mainly to do research. Oh, you can't do research. Uh, research can be done by 13 year olds. Of course, that's such a big difference. <laughs> uh, we can't even get Alphios to do any crafting particularly anyway, so I guess I'll just take everybody off of stone cutting apart from Alphios and that'll be his job. Who's have some traders come along and they have got some quests for us. A bandit camp, an item stash or a downed refugee. So if we're going to go for ones that we can get more slaves from, the bandit camp is going to be the one that we get to get the most. If you want a guaranteed slave, the drowned refugee. <laughs> I think we'll go for the bandit camp, and then once Smelly and Jezebel get back up from their death rest, we'll go deal with it. So a fugitive encampment expires in four days, and it is controlled by the ogre tribes, and it is one person there. But... We will get two treasure, we can get two treasure chests. <laughs> Very nice, two treasure chests sound fantastic. So on our way down to the quest, we have found a damsel in distress kidnapped by the Pop Rockba Treaty. Uh, should we rescue them? Follow them silently until they make camp or leave her to her fate. We're gonna follow them silently until they make camp. And then we're going to sneak in and kill the bandits and get them in their sleep and then We've successfully cut through their thoughts without waking them up and free, free the surprised and girl. What do you want to do with her? Uh, let her be on her way or she'll make a fine slave. She'll make a fine slave. So we've just got ourselves another colonist. Have we? We do. We have got ourselves a new colonist. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Mel. Mel is a baseliner. She is six in archery, four in construction, both with single passions. Double passion intellectual as well. Steadfast, unconvincing. You are unhygienic, which is not ideal. You're a kitchen hand, which is nice, beautiful, and tough. You know what? A very nice colonist to pick up, especially with a double passion in intellectual. There we are. We have arrived at the bandit camp. Uh, where is it? Down here. Okay, so once again, Smelly and Jezebel will be using their fists in hopes that we don't kill these people off. When I say people, I mean the singular ogre. There he is. Ooh, what's that? A leg. An end of elephant leg is just sitting in here. Of course. So we have Guwark Mucus. 18 in mining. Jesus. Um, but otherwise, you're not actually that good. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, once we set up the quarry mod, which is what we will be using for infinite resources this time around, he'd probably be quite handy. But at the moment, not really. So I guess we just go beat him up and take him as a slave. Okay, well, we didn't beat him up. We, we straight up killed him. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, God. We're just, we're just too powerful, aren't we? Interesting that it turns out there are actually some dice of chaos on the map. So I assume we'll take those home and we'll roll them to see what happens. Okay, so we've now finished the storeroom as well as our little side project for this episode. It's very basic, very simple. We're going to put a lot of like storage baskets and things all over the place as well, just so we can fill it out. And this is going to be where we have our main shop front here. And we also have two treasure chests that I hadn't realized that I'd got. Open the treasure. Show me what we have. There's some silver and some orcalicum and 
Ah, of course, some lovely potions. Um, so we've got cold speed and wings. Uh, we've got slower aging. Okay. And then we have slower aging again. Nice. And then because these aren't in gene banks, because we don't know what those are, they're just going to just disintegrate. Uh, we also got some ancient notes and some legendary medicine. Very nice. So alongside now Mel having being a slave, that brings our total of slaves up to seven. Seven slaves and three colonists. And as I said in previous episodes, we would then be able to convert hops into a vampire if we had enough slaves. And now the time is here. Smelly, implant your genes on hops. No, you can't. Jezebel, implant your genes on hops. No, you can't. Shit. <laughs> ah. Uh, we can't actually implant genes because the genes are still regrowing. Ah, an oversight. Whoops. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> what we'll do then is I will still imprison Hops and I will make her a colonist and then we'll aim to make her into a vampire as soon as we can. So 50 days, 50 days to make until we can make her a, a vampire. It's pretty ridiculous, but... As long as we're not getting too many colonists, it should be okay. Colonists are gathering to celebrate Solus and Jealous Jezebel's marriage. Sorry, what? When was that announced? That has not been announced yet. So why are we getting married now? Where are you getting married? Where are you getting married? They decided to get married in one of these slaves' houses. What a lovely area to get married. So now, Jezebel and Solus will be able to sleep together. And I won't even have to change the IG religion as it has been suggested. Fantastic. And Jezebel and Solis have now married. Fantastic. So, more importantly, they are now sleeping together. Lovely. Absolutely bloody lovely. Now, as I said earlier, we have the roll dice of chaos appeared. And I've remembered that I need to roll them. Jezebel, do you think this is going to go badly? Yes, Joe. I think it will go badly. Roll the dice. What will happen? A shuttle crash. Okay, that was really good. That's really... That's really good. Um, anyone popping out? Oh my god, that's a lot of people popping out. Starry, Slaughterer, and Sar. All of them very similar. Starry is a Reglid with a critical passion of 16 in melee. Jesus, who's also muscular as well. Persuasion plus is an 18 double passionate as well. Wow, you're good. Slaughter, who is a Saurid, five natural passionate in melee, four in construction, eight in cooking, and three in herb lore. You're insatiable and clumsy and have no talent. And Saar, Saar is a genie, psychically hypersensitive, and you're a bowman. But then you don't actually have a passion. Archery, you're a wimp and delicate. So not the best. They are not the best, basically. Apart from Slaughterer, who is... Apart from Starry, who is extremely strong. Jezebel, I'm going to get you to capture Starry. The other two, they're okay. I have no need for them. But we know what we do need? Blood bags. We need blood bags because we no longer have any. I completely forgot about blood bags. Now, because the build base now is at a point where it's pretty much complete. We've got our natural path that kind of winds its way through the town and builds itself up into Jezebel's castle. We've got these nice passageways going between the three main buildings. I've prepped a school over here. We're going to have an infirmary down at in this corner slash prison. Things are looking really good within the town. Progress is going nicely. We just need to get some research for, done with Jezebel and we're going to have a fantastic time. Stone stacking is finally complete. Next. <gasps> smithing so we can finally make things or basic furniture so we can give people beds it's got to be smithing it's just got to be like we can start actually equipping people with good things we can start crafting this was the goal there goes so the tavern is now fully complete we have our kitchen and freezer over here our main eating area in the middle and then we have our hotel guest rooms off to the side we have our cheap cheap one that's basically just there's <laughs> just spots on the floor to sleep. We have our bunk bedroom, which is just some beds all together. And then we have our luxury rooms that are just singular rooms. Not too many rooms. I could probably expand it a little bit further if I wanted to. But I've left some space down at the bottom here for a sauna uh, for when we eventually get the research. And a prison break. Prisoners are staging a breakout. Hops and Mel. Two potential slaves and colonists of the future is breaking out. I don't think this is necessarily a good idea, 
Especially as Jezebel is here. Jezebel, I don't need to kill Mel, but if you could just sort her out, that'd be fantastic. And Hops. Hops is destroying all the walls. Okay. <laughs> Jezebel, teach her a lesson. And there we go. Easy peasy. So whilst Hops was trying to break out, it turns out we've accidentally taken out both of her eyes. <laughs> Oh, uh, which basically means that she's useless. I really wanted Hops to become a vampire, but honestly, if you're just going to be blind, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think Hops, I had really high hopes for you, but there's just no point making you a vampire if you can't see. I think we're going to have to choose someone else, honestly. First visitors are arriving from the Union of Raleigh, and they're afraid of the insects. Um, well, as long as you don't enter... F and go and find the insects, you should be fine. Always let them come. And our first group of visitors, welcome, my friends. God, there's loads of them. Wow. And they're all taking the free beds. Oh, actually, one that you gave me 20 silver. Perfect. But this man has come with quests. Lion. Lion is going straight to the throne room to go speak to Jezebel about these quests. So we can either hunt a Fogler, hunt an Ekamara, which I know is a vampire type thing, or hunt a him. Let's try a Fogler this time. Trait, depressive. Colonist Rust, constant state of stress has made their depression beyond permanent. Rust, what is the matter? Why are you stressed? You've been fed on, you've been recreation starved, and you slept on the ground. You've just slept all the time and you've become st stressed as a result. Really? Okay. Jezebel's arrived at the monster encounter. Where is said monster? Uh, payment arrived. You have defeated the monsters. What do you mean I've defeated the monsters? I, I haven't done anything. There, look, there's the Foglers. They're just not hostile. Well, I guess we will still kill them anyway, just, just so then we can say we've done it. Uh, it seems like the mob might be ever so slightly broken where they're not hostile. And a raid from the Cult of Cain. Oh no, <laughs> they've got bows and arrows and we've got slaves with blitz of wood. <laughs> um, I will assemble everybody to deal with this. I think if we just overwhelm them with numbers, this won't be too bad at all. And a wine merchant has turned up as well in the middle of this raid. Um, if you could not go through that door there and you could go fight the elves, that'd be really nice. But I don't think we're going to do that. And elves from the Cult of Cain are beginning their assault. At the moment, we're kind of dealing with a forest fire that won't, that will hopefully not burn down the rest of our town. And then we'll go deal with it. Oh, they're killing off my guests. Don't do that. I don't want to have to accidentally loot the guests. Please don't kill them. Ah. <laughs> oh, actually, there's another one even closer. You. You have a dog on your back. That is so cool. <laughs> and the elves from the Cult of Cain are fleeing. No, you're not. We are going to chase you down. How dare you come in here and kill my lovely hotel guests? How dare you? Hops has now been re-enslaved. I don't know how useful Hops is going to be now she doesn't have any eyes. But I'm hoping she'd still be able to do some things. Her manipulation is cut in half exactly. So I assume she's not totally useless. I hope. Trait, another one that's become depressive. Slaughter has become depressive. That's totally understandable. You no longer have either of your legs. <laughs> and you are living to become my blood farm. And you know what? We're going to call things here as Jezebel and Smelly return. I maybe didn't achieve some of the goals as best as I wanted to this episode. Like, I didn't actually manage to craft any armor or anything, but we got the research. I did a lot more build base than I expected to, and that's okay. Yes, I lied at the very beginning of this episode, said there wasn't going to be very much build base, and there was, but hey, ho, we had our issues. Um, the issue of having not being able to implant our genes into other people is going to be a bit of an issue, especially with how long it's going to take. I don't know what to do. I don't know what the workaround for that is going to be. I guess it, it'll just be luck to find another vampire and then go from there. Um, in terms of getting more slaves, it's been a fantastic episode for that. We've got two more slaves on the go in here. We've got May, Mel and Slaughter, Astari. So building the colony is going very nicely. I think we might have to do some recruiting of non-slaves and we'll find a way around that. If you have any suggestions for how we could do that, leave me a comment and let me know. So if you have enjoyed today's episode, consider liking, subscribing, 
make sure you tell your mum about it and I'll see you next time. Thank you.